All right, guys, it's Friday, which means let's push through number corner because that means we're that much closer to the weekend. Today is Friday the 13th. Ooh, Friday the 13th. Hopefully it's going to be a great day today. It's going to be a great day today. I know it. We're going to go through our calendar grid and our calendar collector really quickly because we have a problem string to get to today that involves some talk about money, 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 money. Ready? Here we go. Let's look at our marker. Not even going to ask for predictions. Three o'clock. It's three o'clock p.m. Let's add that to our chart. And p.m. We have one hour and 20 minutes still on our um that we're collecting okay and so that brings our total to 15 hours yeah all right calendar collector we have already have two full pictures two full quarts that's what they are and now we're adding another cup for our ninth day of school so here we go one cup, which gives us, and I'm going to fill this in really quickly as well, which gives us two and one fourth quarts. And here is our equation. Remember, this is talking about quarts. So two and a fourth quarts. All right. Now let's jump right into our problem string. So context for today is money. So how much money is a dime? How much cents is a dime worth? 10 cents, great. How much cents is a penny worth? Y'all know this, Uh, one cents, right. All right, so we have some pennies, we have some dimes, and we're gonna figure out how much money that is all together. So some combinations, all right. So you have three dimes and five pennies. How much are they worth in all? Three dimes. Five pennies, and I'm gonna add that on my chart here. Three dimes. And I have five pennies. How much is that worth? I'm gonna write, do it like this. Yeah, that is 35 cents. And I'm gonna write it like 35 cents. Or we can write it as decimal dollar sign decimal 35 okay so here we go perfect and i will add my dollar sign 35 underneath it so we can see there's two ways to write this okay all right so let's look at the next question Seven dimes and eight pennies. How much are they worth in all? So now we have seven dimes and eight pennies. And this is not cooperating. Maybe I need to do this. Okay. So seven dimes, eight pennies. How much is that worth? You guys should be doing the math in your head right now. Right, seven dimes, seven times 10, 70, eight pennies, eight times one is eight. So we have 78 cents, 78 cents, which I could also write as 78 um, with the dollar sign, right? Just like I did with my 35 cents. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. All right, are we ready to look at the next problem? Great. We're whizzing through this on this awesome Friday today. Now we have 13 dimes and nine pennies. Go ahead and work through how much money that's worth in all. 13 dimes and nine pennies. So let's look at our chart here. 
if you noticed, or maybe you haven't, hopefully you have, is that this is the tens, this is the ones, that's our total. So we really didn't even have to go through the uh, three, seven times 10 plus eight times one thing. We have tens and ones. But now we have 13 nines. Where am I going to put that? I don't want to put 13 in my tens place. No. 13 dimes means I actually have a dollar. And three dimes. So I'm going to put my one in my dollars place, which is really not in like the hundreds place. I have three dimes, and remember I said I have nine pennies. So we have one dollar, three dimes, and nine pennies. How much money is that? Easy peasy, right? Now we're really seeing what's happening. That means I have one dollar and 39 cents. That is what I have. One dollar and thirty-nine cents. It's really easy to see once we recognize that we have hundreds place, tens place, ones place. So how would I write that in just cents like I've done before? Right, one hundred thirty-nine cents. Let's look at the next one. Ooh, yikes. Now I have 13 dimes and 14 pennies. See if you can figure out how you might label that on our ongoing chart here. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and get out your number corner workbook and open it to the back where we have space for problem strings and label it problem string nine for number corner. And see if you can figure out how we're gonna label 14 dimes and um, excuse me, 13 dimes and 14 pennies. How might I label that? Great, so we still have a dollar. Right, because our 13 dimes, this looks, it's in the hundreds place, tens place, ones place. So we could say 13 dimes, we could say 139 pennies, which is what we've written here. So if I have 13 dimes and 14 pennies, then I still have a dollar and three dimes. Well, do I wanna put 14 in the ones place? No, how can I reorganize that or regroup that? Good. 10 pennies is a dime. So I have 10 pennies and 4 pennies with my 14. So now I have an extra dime. So it should look like this. I have $1. I have 4 dimes. And I have 4 pennies, which is going to give me what? 8. If you're noticing our pattern here, we should now have 144 cents. And if I write that um, in standard notation, it would look like this. Dollar symbol, one decimal 44. All right, you guys are rocking today. Got a few more to do. So now, let's look at the next set. Now it says I have eight dimes and seven pennies. My friend gave me six more dimes and five more pennies. How much money do I have in all? Well, what is my, um, what operation does that mean I'm gonna use? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Yeah, I'm adding. So if I have eight dimes, eight dimes, plus seven pennies, and I'm adding to it six dimes, and five pennies, what's that going to give me? Good, now I have 14 dimes plus 
12 days. But we had to refigure how to write that with our last problem, right? 14 dimes is the same thing as saying I have 10 dimes. And four more dimes, right? Plus I have 10 pennies. We're breaking them up, we wanna reorganize them. And two more pennies. It makes it much easier to see it now, right? Because 10 pennies is what? It's one dime. So I need to put an equal sign here. And what are 10 dimes? Good, that's one dollar. Now I have one dollar. I still have my four dimes. But now I have another dime, my 10 pennies, right? Plus one dime and two pennies. So how much money is that all together? Good. It's a dollar plus five dimes plus two pennies, which is one dollar fifty two cents or one hundred fifty two cents. Easy peasy, right? Easy peasy, and then squeezy. All right. Um, maybe you didn't do it like this. Maybe you knew that eight dimes and seven pennies was eighty seven cents. And you knew six dimes and five pennies was 65 cents. So maybe you added 87 plus 65. Did anybody do that? Yeah, you could have. And if you do that, are you going to get the same answer? Yeah, so 87 plus 65 is still going to give me... Um, 152. But the way you may get 152 is you may have to think about breaking down 65 because you want to get to a friendly number. Remember we did those friendly numbers. So we have 87 plus, I'm going to say 12 plus 52. No, not 12. Silly, Mr. Trimmel. I had it right the first time. 13 plus 52 because 13 plus 87 is going to give me 100 plus 52, which is still 152 cents. So either way you solved it would be perfectly fine with me, okay? Let's look at the next one. My daughter had 35 cents. I gave her 68 more cents. So it's something kind of like what we did here. How much money does she have now? Go ahead and work it out. Pause this video if you need to. Let's check out my work here. Did anybody do this? Did you translate 35 plus 68 into 3 dimes plus 5 pennies plus 6 dimes plus 8 pennies? Maybe. And if you did, you probably got 9 dimes and 13 pennies. You need 13 pennies as a dime and 3 pennies. So 10 dimes and 3 pennies, which is a dollar and 3 pennies, which is 103 cents. Okay? Or maybe you thought about making a friendly number, so you just added those numbers together in which you took two from 35, make it 33 plus two, so you still have 35, but now you're gonna give the two to the 68, so it's 33 plus 70, 103 still, still 103 cents. Which one did you choose to do? Awesome, did you get the right answer? That's what I care about. Not only the right answer, but also we want to be efficient. This problem, this way down here, is probably more efficient unless you thought through this in your head really quickly, okay? Because maybe you think about money really quickly because you probably like money. I like money. All right, looks like this is our last problem on our problem string before we talk about a few other things. So 87 plus 64. How might you choose to solve this problem? Pause this video and work it out. Right. I'm going to choose to use a method where you make a friendly number because that seems to be the easiest. So 87 plus 64 is the same thing as 87 plus that same 13 that we did earlier um, plus 51. 
which is going to equal 100 plus 51, which is 151. And we could put cents there, but since there's no context here, 151 is the answer. Unless we're talking about money, it's 151 cents. We thought in terms of money, and that's 8 dimes, 7 pennies, 6 dimes, 4 pennies. So 8 dimes and 6 dimes is going to give you 14 dimes. But then you have seven pennies and four pennies, which is eleven pennies. Then we gotta add another dime, so we got fifteen dimes and a penny. Okay? Guess what? All this work with money is helping us do. It's helping us think about or deepen our understanding of the standard algorithm. And you may have heard me say that in some previous videos about you could use the standard algorithm. And you probably know how to do it. You may just not have used the term standard algorithm, but that's what you're doing. So I'm going to write a problem here vertically, and I'm going to um, uh, work through the standard algorithm just like we kind of did using money, so that you can connect what we are actually doing, okay? So I'm going to give a new problem here. We have 165 plus 78 you draw my line here and let's work it out. Now, if we were thinking in terms of dimes and pennies, dollars, we have five pennies plus eight dimes, or five pennies plus eight pennies, and that's going to give us how many pennies? 13 pennies. But well, we can't put 13 pennies. We don't want to walk around with a pocket full of pennies. So we are going to regroup the 10 and the three ones, right? So here's what it would look like. I put a three here, and I put my new dime in my tens column. Making sense so far? Nice. So what next? Right, six plus one is seven plus seven is fourteen. That I'm thinking money. Fourteen dimes. Well, we can't have. We don't have fourteen dimes. We want to exchange it. We need some dollar bills, right? So I keep my four dimes, but I know I have. 10 dimes, that equals a dollar. And dollars go in my hundreds place. You see the connection? So now I have a dollar plus another dollar, which is two dollars. So my answer is 243. So our problem strings this month were around addition, adding multi-digit numbers. And we've done a few different strategies. And I'm going to show you those strategies. Hopefully you can read them nice and clearly. Uh, maybe I'm not going to show you. But one of the strategies is jumping to a friendly number, which is what we did when we had 87 plus 13 to get to 100. Okay? So your friendly numbers, you want to get to a near 10 or a near 100. We jumped by a friendly number. So um, when you're adding really big numbers, we're going to jump maybe by hundreds first and then tens and then our ones, okay? You can give and take. So you can take some, like we took some from 33 um, or 35 and gave it to, uh, what, what did we give it to? Hmm. Um, we took some from 35 and we gave it to 68 to make 70, okay? Do you remember that? So that's give and take. Can break apart a number using place value, which is kind of what we did with our money, or you can use the algorithm. Algorithm works anytime. Breaking apart by place value works anytime. Jumping to a friendly number only works when you are near the nearest 10 or the nearest 100. Okay, we're going to continue working through these. Number corner, also when we get to our units and bridges. Otherwise, have a great Friday. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.